a lawyer in Spain, a uh, Zoom seminar today with, with, with estate agents. Um, on the call today, we have members of the team from my lawyer in Spain. So we've got Isabel there. Where are you, Isabel? I'm here. There you go. There's Isabel. Uh, Rosario. So they're, 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 they're logging in and um, we'll say hello shortly. We've, this, is the third, this is the fourth seminar we've, we've arranged and um, lots of people have found the information coming out of these seminars very useful. Lots of interesting information and questions. And today we're joined by, by four estate agents from across the country. One of the, just as far as an update on Spain is concerned, there is a, um, there's a fierce debate ongoing at the moment as to when the borders will actually open and when people um, who live abroad will be able to come to Spain to their holiday homes. So if the borders do not open uh, for flights, and, 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 um, and uh, sadly they're talking about not having those flights open until July and August, but as I said, there's a, there's a fierce debate against that at the moment. What I've heard in the news um, in the last 24 hours is that they may allow people to drive down to their holiday homes. So that would be good news for anyone who actually owns a property uh, already, but not, not so good for those who, who are looking at, at buying. But this is a changing, ever-changing environment that we're in. It's a, from our point of view, it's a, it's a human tragedy that's going as far as the, the virus is concerned. And then no doubt we've got the, the economic tragedy coming further ahead. Not only are we helping out on, on the legal side, so today, for example, we signed a purchase of a property in Almeria and also in, in inheritance. We're also um, helping out the British Benevolent Fund and other charities who are helping people who are stuck at home, can't afford to pay their electric bills, can't afford to feed, out, to, to feed themselves and, and just need some company. So there are some great charities and organizations out there. Um, one of them, you know, have a look on Facebook. You've got Collective Calling. You've got the British Benevolent Fund all doing good work for, for people who find them in these distressing times at the moment. So welcome to, to everyone from us. And without further ado, I'd like, the, um, I'd like to introduce the agents to you. And um, I'll start off with Tracy. Tracy, um, and then if you, we've, got, we've got Tracy on the line, we've got Zoe on the line, we've got Javier, and we've got Stephen. And we're gonna, we're gonna kind of follow, follow boy, girl, boy, girl format. Can you introduce yourself? Tell us the area you cover and where you are based. Of course. Um, well, great to be here um, and be part of this. Um, my name is Tracy Hawkins. I'm a partner with Five Real Estate. Um, we're a fixed fee estate agent and we're bas based on the south coast of Blanca. Um, so just a little south of, of Torre Vieja. Um, and we've actually got offices in Villa Martin and San Miguel de Salinas. Um, as, as, a, as a business, we cover from La Mata um, down to Los Alcatraz and then inland into Theodat Casada, San Miguel de Salinas, Torremendo, and down to Campo Pino, Campo, Campo Verde. Okay, same, same question to um, Stephen. Oh, good afternoon. Um, my name is Stephen Howlett. I'm from VIP Almeria. We're based in Mojaca Play in the Costa Almeria. It's uh, an area that we cover on the coastal uh, resort, so we cover probably more or less the coast along the eastern Atlantic. And, and same question now for Zoe. Hi, I'm Zoe Mayles from Olvera Properties SL. We cover the region inland in between Malaga and Seville, um, a place called Olvera, and it's about 40 minutes from Ronda, so we kind of cover around the area between Ronda, Olvera, and, and about an hour distance, depending Thanks, on what it is. <laughs> Thank you, Zoe. And now we've got, we've got someone different on the line in that we've, we've got three stage agents from across the country, but we also have a developer. So Javier, can you introduce yourself, please? Uh, I was born originally in Mexico. I'm a commercial real estate uh, agent and a residential agent as well in the US. I've been living most of my life in the US and recently I moved with uh, my company to uh, offer a 501 units that we're developing here in Costa del Sol, Spain. We came with a project that we wanted to create something that is affordable units for people that are looking to get uh, the highest technology and nicer ocean views in um, between Estepona and uh, Soto Grande. So 
that's what we're doing here and very happy to be with us today. Thank you. Isabel, do you want to kick off the round of questions that we've received through? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you for the introduction uh, from um, uh, all your companies. And um, I think that, uh, well, the, the first question and first um, uh, concern, what, what we are uh, what we are wondering is how lockdown is affecting your business. I mean, have you made any changes uh, to your business as a result of this situation? Of course, I guess that uh, not getting out so often and that will be the first thing. But we would uh, we would really love to hear what what kind of uh, actions you've taken, any specific measure. Off one with with Tracy. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, of course, um, the lockdown itself has um, meant that we've had to make some um, changes to the business in terms of how we operate. Um, our offices are closed to the public at the moment. Um, but having said that, we've moved all of our staff and our team so that they're working from home. So we're still fully operational. Um, all of our phone lines have been transferred. So as far as the, the you know, our vendors and our buy potential buyers are concerned, um, they still contact us as normal and get the, you know, the same sort of service as, as they can. Um, we, you know, obviously without us being able to, to travel around as much as, as we can, having to operate within the um, travel restrictions that, that are placed. Um, so it has provided us with some challenges, but likewise, it's also provided us with a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, it's forced us to consider and look at how we now need to interact with our, our potential buyers and our vendors um, and what we need to what we need to change from there. Um, so we've actually been quite busy, um, not only dealing with all of the stuff that was ongoing before and the new stuff that's come in, but also in doing things like, you know, we've re we're revising our website, we'll be launching that, um, you know, towards the end of the month. Um, we're bringing on some new products that we've learned that you know will be useful for our vendors and our new buyers um, moving forward as a consequence of the current situation in the lockdown. Um, and we're, we're upgrading our marketing and CRM so that we can actually improve the services we offer to our vendors and and, and you know potential buyers moving forward. Um, so yes, it's it's created some some challenges, but having said that, you know we've been able to react to them quickly. And from the outside world, outside of the physical movement elements, um, it's, you know, business is pretty much as usual. So, same question to, to Stephen. Uh, good afternoon. Um, well, where we're based in Casa Maria, it's all about areas. So what we've done is we put the focus down on the lifestyle and start targeting our national clientele because of you know the lack of contact. But what we have done is we've revised all the portal advertising to ensure that we're getting a fair deal because the advertising platforms are very, very important. We have also expanded the company and opened an office in Ireland. Uh, one of the key areas that we paid a lot of attention to it in the last four weeks is we have devised a property index. So it will actually go through a system where people can actually compare pricing dating back to 2011 for going through post and pre-recession. Uh, this is actually going to be used as a marketing tool so that people can actually get you know, a good informative figures on guidelines of how property prices can be affected in their area. Now, unlike uh, the other regions like Costa del Sol, Costa Blanca, you know, this is a very unique, a special area where we are. It's uh, not mass produced, it's very low rise in density. So we have to focus on the lifestyle that goes with each and every zone, so to say. So in Mahaka, we've only got a population of just over 5,000 people. So what we've done is broken the areas down into each player will have its own identity. And we'll be putting the focus more so on that than uh, anything else. Interesting, and um, and for those of you who recognise accents, Stephen's got a good old Irish accent there, and that, hence the the opening of the new Irish office. Then is that right, Stephen? I say very very happy to do it. There's a lot of work as well because in Ireland you have to be regulated and licensed as well. So little achievement. Excellent. Well, well, congratulations and all the best with that. Thank you. So Zoe, over to you. Yeah, pretty much the same as everybody else. Really, we're we're all working from home. We're just you know I'm doing more FaceTime calls more um you know more more calling people um the clients that are you know obviously waiting to come out they're just waiting for the for the flights to open um but similar to what everybody else has said we're still getting inquiries we're still getting people that are, you know that are saying they want to come out as soon as they possibly can 
And the other thing that we've done is we've been um, sort of maybe pushing other portals where more local people are able to see. And I've got quite a few uh, people that obviously want to buy a second home or want to relocate. So again, just pushing the area, pushing where we are, pushing how, you know, the style of life and how, how laid back it is and, you know, traditional Spanish town. Excellent, Javier? Well, thank you, Alex. And uh, as a developer, the lockdown has affected us in a three um, main aspects. The first one is lead generation. The second one, we're talking about cash flow. And the third element that we're looking at is customer retention. So if you are more interested in these details, I can share this with you. But most definitely, it has to slow down our business significantly. So we don't have that many property tours, uh, physical tours anymore, as we would like to. And in spite of that, we have two areas where we have seen positive results for us. The first one is in the construction area. As you know, uh, the construction industry and all that has been opened up recently. And that allows our project is an existing project that we are developing. So it allows us to continue and moving forward in the process of development. And the second aspect that has forced us to move forward, like Zoe and Stephen mentioned briefly before, is in the areas of technology. So what we're doing with our platform, we are becoming more active in what we call the social media, especially working with Facebook and addressing the client's needs or our broker's needs because we work with brokers from all over the world and they want to know how we can support their clients. So I personally am making myself available to all the brokers that have questions about our project and then we're really getting more in touch. We're increasing the amount of contacts and touch with our clients to be closer with them in this situation. So that's what we're doing. Patricia, can you Hi, well, hello all. Uh, sorry that I joined you late today, but, but I have some problems with my computer. Um, well, I have a question, um, which is actually three questions uh, for the state agents. Um, first of all, is, is um, if you are still showing the properties, and how are you showing those properties? Um, and last question is, what nationality are your buyers? Yeah, well, again, um, due to the mobility restrictions that have been placed on us and the reasons why people can be out of the house, um, physical, physically showing people properties isn't possible for us at the moment. Um, we already, as a, as a business, had a number of properties with videos um, and, uh, you know, uh, maybe, you know, not as many as we, we actually need at this time. So that's something that we're actually going to be increasing as the, um, the, you know, the lockdown and the restrictions are, are, are lifted. Um, we find that actually, um, whereas previously um, buyers were, you know, not overly interested in videos, they'd have a look. Um, they're actually more interested in, in the videos now and we get a lot of good questions from them. Um, so again, we're learning as, as, the, as the weeks have progressed, you know, how we're going to need to operate moving forward in this, what will be a changed business environment. Um, we obviously our volume of inquiries has dropped. Um, however, we are still getting them. Um, and what, what's, what's interesting is the quality of the inquiries that we are getting are of a good quality. Um, so we've actually been building quite a long list of um, potential buyers, active buyers as we call them, that are actively looking to come out to Spain or if they're already here in Spain have specifically said that they want to view certain properties once the lockdown restrictions allow them to. Um, so. I mean, the impacts um, in terms of, of actually being physically able to show properties you know, are, are a big challenge for, for us at the moment, but something that we're, we're working around and I think will improve our portfolio and our ability to present properties in different ways moving forward. Thank, thanks, Lucy. Um, so, same, same question to, to Stephen there. Yeah, following up from uh, Tracy, we're exactly the same. We can't open up to the public. However, we are working with like, the Zoom conference calls, we are doing WhatsApp, FaceTime, uh, we have got videos of the properties, some virtual tours of properties to be able to do walkthroughs. So in one way, it's presenting a property through another means. Uh, with a lot of our clientele, you know, we have got you know, a number of different nationalities. So in no particular order, Spanish, French, Belgian, Irish and English are our core business. That's not alienating anybody else, but they would be the majority of our clientele. Um, in regards to you know, how we're going to move forward with showing, 
until the lockdown is finished, we can't uh, physically do any um, viewings or visits, but we'll do our best remotely. Excellent, excellent. interesting. So, so video, video calls and virtual tours is, is the future, I suppose, when you, when you list properties uh, going forward. So, so St Stephen, and, Stephen and Tracy are from kind of the popular areas of uh, Costa Blanca and, and, um, and, and Almeria. And Zoe's more more inland, Zoe. So, so how are you, how are you dealing with 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 um, you know, showing properties and and yeah, obviously and we, we can't. Yeah, obviously we can't show any properties at the moment. Um, I have managed to be a bit cheeky with a couple of my um, owners and ask them to do videos if somebody particularly wants to see their house. Um, we're really really lucky in Olvera that there is absolutely zero um, coronavirus. So you know the, the the whole time there's no recorded cases. So I have approached the police this week, the local police, to see if um, Kevin's able to go out and have a look and, you know, just check prop properties over. And within that, we'd probably be doing a couple more videos just to get them online while he's there. Um, the police have okayed that because obviously, you know, we're going in to check properties um, and they're quite, they're quite happy with that because obviously there's no, no sort of no cases in Olvera. So yeah, I mean, again, this, you know, pretty much the same as what everyone else has said. We're, we're just, you know, more calls, more, more videos. We'll, you know, obviously going forward, we've got quite a few um, videos already of properties, but you know, it just highlights the need for more really. And, and the nationality of your, of your clients? Um, Zoe? Again, yeah, British, Spanish. I've had a lot of Spanish inquire that, you know, again, that are in Spain, they're just waiting to, for the lockdown to be lifted so they can come over um all over really all north europeans the uk mainly is our is our buyers okay interesting and javier same same question for you yeah thank you alex just uh replicating what tracy and Stephen and even Zoe was sharing but from our point of view is we are a developer so for us we have two clients we have the their clients, the clients that the broker has are our brokers, the agents, those are our clients. So obviously we cannot show our development to anybody. However, we are doing, uh, we engage with a local company that has an amazing virtual tour services and we are applying more technology as well as connecting and providing agents with all the tools. We have our Instagram and Facebook posts that we keep updated to our agents so they can communicate with their clients because it's important that we put together a strong team of people like in this case with you on the legal side and we maintain everybody within our teams uh, actualized in our development so that the client can have a better uh, way to know what's going on even if uh, apparently nothing is going on with the, with the lockdown but things are moving and it's our responsibility to share this in the same way that they are doing increasing the video calls, the virtual tours, and social media platforms. Thank you, Javier. Okay, I've got another question. It's ba basically, um, someone asked us, how are you handling sales that had been agreed before the lockdown? So if we ask that, start off with Tracy on that one. Yeah, we actually had quite um, a large uh, number of, of, of sales that were at various stages through the process prior to the to the lockdown. Um, and again, the situation is different for a lot of a lot of people. Um, it really does depend on on, on the clients. Um, we were lucky enough to um, get a lot of people with power attorneys, both vendors and clients, um, which has allowed them to go home if that's what they wanted to do, and obviously for the the lawyers to act on act on their behalf. Um, there's um, differing restrictions with, with notaries in terms of, you know, at the moment they're only doing emergency um, completions. But having said that, we've had a number go through both at the end of March and, and likewise this month. Um, so we're still actively working. All of the lawyers are similar, you know, working online, working from home. Um, so we're in full communication with, with, with our vendors, our, our, our buyers, and progressing as much as we can. And then basing what we're doing on, on obviously their, their personal circumstances. We've been unfortunate in that we've had um, some clients that have been affected personally by the COVID-19 virus. Um, luckily, touch wood, they've recovered um, and their completion is going ahead next week. So it's about being flexible. And I think what's really encouraging is, is both the buyers and the vendors um, are being very flexible in terms of how they how they handle things. 
Um, we've been lucky in that we've not had um, a high number of cancellations. In fact, we've only, we've only had a couple. Um, and generally everybody's you know, looking forward to being able to, to complete and uh, move into or you know, get access to the, their new properties when they, they can. We brought in some additional services um, to make sure that obviously we don't know if a sale has been completed by the power of attorney, how long it's going to be before the owners can get into their, the new owners can get into their properties. So we're, we're, you know, we're going to be taking on between now and then, making sure that we can look after their new properties for them, going to check them, and dealing with anything else that they, you know, they, they need us to do as we all work our way or work our way through this. But generally, in terms of the, the sales that were agreed before lockdown, they're progressing at a slower rate, but they are progressing and we are getting completions at the notary, which is excellent news. That's good. Okay. Thank you for that. So same question over to, to Stephen. Uh, in one word, it's always consolidation, Alex. Um, with every single file, we're very fortunate that the agreements that we've had in our pipeline, you know, they haven't been above market valuation, so there was no need for any revision on pricing. Uh, what we've done is we've implemented an annex in each private purchase contract to ensure that it's fair for both parties, as both parties have le had led in under the civil code. So what we've done is uh, just extended and in exceptional cir circumstances. So in the case of this, it's when people can actually travel here to sign if, if they haven't got power of attorney already and or addressing the formalities of them obtaining their NIE. Not that it's necessary to have the NIE to actually do the title signing as long as you have a, a, a time frame of about 30 days to actually get signed. But uh, overall, everything's been fine. You know, we're, we're just focusing on the client inquiries that are coming through and just keep drilling them. Zoe? Yeah, exactly the same. We were really lucky with all of our sales. They had power of attorney set up um, before they went home. We've managed to do one power of attorney in England for the sellers because they can't get out. Um, and we've just extended contracts. In some cases, they've paid a little bit more of a deposit because everybody's happy to wait. But again, the same as what the other guys are saying. It's just everyone's just being really you know, thoughtful and, and, and know that there's nothing that can be done about it, really. We've just got to wait. So, yeah, they're, they're in the pipeline, but we've just got to wait for the, uh, for the notaries to be able to sign and, and the banks for the mortgages. So, that, so that, that, that's, good, that's good news on, on sales going forward, that they've, they've yeah. managed to keep those uh, li alive and kicking. Have you, have you, is, is that the same situation for yourself as well? Yes, uh, when there is um, not a clear vision about the future, people become uncertain and they will become afraid. And when this happens, the only thing that our clients and our agents need is some reassurance that we are there to support them. We started to our development, we start selling in November. And basically, we are probably the highest seller uh, in the Costa del Sol. We'll make about five units per week which is in, unheard of even with this situation. So a lot of our sales, uh, we only came into the reservation agreement, which means that by this time is when we need to sign contracts. However, all that has been a stall because of the situation. So what we do, we have a very proactive effort to inform our clients, their attorneys, and their agents about the current circumstances. And we are at this moment we continue the, the generation process we have a couple sales since the lockdown but we are maintaining that and we expect to start going into contracts right after the situation gets stabilized Thank, thanks for that javier yeah it's um, it's difficult times as far as as far as powers of attorney are concerned obviously they, they can't be signed in spain at the moment before notaries because it's not considered an urgent matter powers of attorney abroad um, we do have some clients still managing to sign them, particularly in the UK. However, the, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office is being slow at putting the stamp of the Apostille or the Hague on them. So we're, we're suggesting to our clients that they wait, wait for that. We can apply for basically what's known as an interim NIE number, which is that, you know, that famous Spanish tax number necessary to pay taxes on completion. We can apply for an NIF number, as it's known, numero de identificación fiscal, and that, that is sufficient for us to, to pay taxes uh, on, on, on property completions. But it's, you know, it's not an ideal situation. We're hoping, as many of you will probably be aware now, that the, the, the state of alarm will be lifted after the 9th of May, and we'll see a gradual opening of, of businesses 
um, as 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 we come out of of the, uh, the state of alarm. Um, in the in the news today, we're talking about bars and restaurants would open in May, and that hotels would open in June. And we've just got to, we've got to wait and see what happens as far as the border is concerned. So so you know we're talking about sales, and and it's great to hear that you're you know everyone's kind of moving towards basically more technology, um, virtual tours, more video calls. Uh, I like Zoe's, you know, Zoe's, you know, getting, getting the sellers to prepare a video of their own house. That makes absolute sense. And, and the use of social media and reviewing your portal. So that, that's really important. And have you had any, has anyone had a sale during the lockdown at all? Tracy? Yes, we have. Um, we, we, um, admittedly, it was um, clients that had viewed the property prior to lockdown. Um, but they came back to us several weeks after they, they viewed and uh, we've, we've got a reservation and taken a deposit on that. And we've also got another couple of offers that we're working through at the moment. Um, interestingly, these are people that know the area very well, uh, where we have had a video of the property. They know the urbanisation um, and, and obviously feel confident to, to, to make the decision. So. Um, I think, you know, there's, there's clearly two types of, of, of potential, you know, buyers during lockdown there. Um, and again, it links back to our ability to be able to adapt to the circumstances and, and, and be able to show properties in a, in a different way that gives people the, uh, the courage to actually make the decision. Um, so, yeah, it's been, it's been good news from that perspective. Obviously not our normal volume, but, you know, um, it's nice that we can, we, we can learn from that and that we know that there are people out there that are still actively looking to, to purchase. Yeah. So, same question to Stephen. Uh, since the lockdown, like I, I didn't arrive back to Spain until near the end of March as I was in Ireland. So uh, when we came back, we have secured three deals at the moment. Uh, to be fair, two of them, they were viewed prior to the lockdown, just before we've left. So at the, end, at the end of the day, it's just basically deals that are secured by people being able to make an informed decision. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that, Stephen. Zoe? Uh, we haven't had any, because obviously we haven't shown any properties, but we do have people that have e either been um, been out once or twice that are so keen to come back and, and decide which house they, they want. So, you know, I think as soon as that does happen, we're going to be really busy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think, I think as soon as um, lockdown um is, is lifted and, and, and yeah. flights recommence i think uh, i certainly think there'll be a there'll be a mini boom um have you have you managed to agree any sales or, during, during the lockdown period yes uh, fortunately in the same situation that tracy and steven uh, what happened is that we were contemplating a, a bunch of transactions prior to the lockdown and this wasn't us it's just a big effort of all our agents that are collaborating with us that are being able to bring the customer down and just um, finalize the sales so yes we have been lucky regarding that excellent excellent good news i mean what we we were contacted a few weeks ago by a client who was interested in a property he hadn't seen the property uh before but he knew the area quite well and knew the urbanization and he put down a, a cheeky offer which he didn't think was going to be accepted, but it was accepted. And we've, um, we exchanged contracts on that this week. One of the conditions of that purchase was that it was subject to a survey and architects and surveyors, because of they're considered essential workers, are actually allowed out to visit properties and prepare a report. So, so we managed to obtain the survey this week and that came back positively. And as I said, so the client exchanged contracts and he hasn't seen that yet. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll watch with uh, eager anticipation when, on his first trip when, uh, when flights recommence. Isabel, over to you. Yeah, um, well, uh, what we are seeing, at least uh, in our firm, we have many clients, uh, of course, that were in the process of buying and selling properties, and most of the contracts uh, ha have been extended as, well, both buyers and sellers are under the same circumstances. Everyone is quite flexible and, and understandable. So um, it's true that some of them um, have perhaps tried to uh, change terms, conditions, um, although that's not been the normal um, situation. But um, what, uh, what do you think as agents, what is the sentiment amongst your sellers? Are they uh, thinking that perhaps after the lockdown they may have to review the prices or um, on the contrary, they may think that there is going to um, uh, be a different kind of offer. What What do you think? Should we start with uh, Tracy? 
Yeah, that's fine. Um, at the, for us at the moment, it appears it's, from our seller's perspective, it's very much a case of uh, wait and see. Um, you know, nobody really knows, and it's difficult for us to say, you know, what is going to be the, the impact. Um, we're very honest with them. You know, they're aware that the inquiries are down significantly. Um, we told them that we anticipate a price drop, but we can't put any figures, and I wouldn't even want to attempt to do that at the moment. Um, you know, it'll be led by the interest and, and, and the offers, obviously, that come through going, you know, after all of this has, 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 has um, sorted itself out. Um, so at the moment, yeah, we've, we're very much getting a case of, well, let's, let's wait and see. I think the sellers know that there is going to be some change in the market. Um, but there's, there's no rush at the moment for them to consider dropping the prices. Um, and in fact, when we have had, you know, we've had several conversations with people that feel that even if the prices do drop, um, it won't be as long lasting as the, the financial crisis of 2008. So, uh, you know, a few of them have even intimated that they would be prepared to take their property off the market and uh, wait to see what happens and potentially bring it back on in 12 months, 18 months times. And of course, a lot of this is going to be very unique to people's individual circumstances. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if they've been adversely affect, affected by um, the global pandemic in the country that they currently live in, you know, they might have a financial need that means they need to sell the property quickly. Um, and obviously, you know, we'll need to advise them based on, you know, what the market conditions are at the time and help them to understand what they need to do to make that, that quick sale. Yeah. So um, I think these are the sorts of conversations that as estate agents we will be having as the lockdown starts to move, as we start to get buyers potentially coming back into, into Spain. Um, and it will certainly be a big focus of the conversations with vendors moving forward so that we can obviously give them the appropriate advice um, and manage their expectations based on what I think is going to be a, you know, a, a very changeable market between now and the end of the, this year, certainly, and going into the early part of next year. Okay, thank you. Uh, what about you, Steve? Uh, what's your view about that? Well, just speaking for the cost of Anne Maria, the prices have not changed other than constructors. Um, even they just issued a maximum reduction on properties by 6% for a very limited period just to try and you know, keep things going over. Vendors in general, they're looking at the rate of exchange. You know, we consult with a number of agents who, like ourselves, have seen a number of properties been withdrawn from the market. Now, you know, vendors, they, they don't want to compromise on the pricing at the moment. They don't want to be giving things away. But what we have in is you know vendors put across that they don't expect much market activity for the next six to nine months you know the lockdown has made a lot of people rethink their plans and you know if people are deciding to hold on to their properties it means there will be less properties available on the market so that will dictate on pricing as well um sorry yeah pretty much the same like none of my buyers have said that they want to drop um they're just holding out finding out you know obviously when people are allowed back into spain um, finding out, you know, how long it will be before they can they can move their properties. So most of my clients are just quite happy to just sit it out and wait and see what happens. Um, haven't had anybody really that said, you know, drop it dramatically or uh, or have you got anybody? Everybody's just being quite sort of cool and calm about it really, and and just waiting and you know seeing what happens. Mm -hmm. I have had a few clients who have said, you know, about making cheeky offers and, you know, the same as I always say, you can always offer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Javier, uh, have you considered the possibility to perhaps to reduce prices or change uh, the price schedule you had? Thank you, Isabel. And as developers, uh, we have seen in the market and we have heard from other agents and they have asked us this question already about what do you guys think? Do you think you're going to be dropping the price? And the, the thing for us is that from the beginning, we uh, set up our price point under 100,000 euros for a two bedroom unit with uh, ocean views and all the home smart technology, what they call here in Spain, the domotica. So we feel that since the beginning, we have a very strong aggressive price strategy for our product. So therefore, this, uh, this is helping us at this time where 
we don't need to stall or slow down our sales. We are really coming back with the same offer that we have with our clients. And one of the things that is helping us is that the place in the municipality where we have our, our project, uh, we haven't had any cases of the virus so far. So this is a very big vote of confidence for all our buyers. And we, as soon as we start getting traction in the sales again, we are considering, uh, as a matter of fact, to start increasing the prices back again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, um, on the contrary, what's the sentiment amongst the, amongst the buyers? Uh, do they believe that after the lockdown, there will be um, good bargains, good offers for properties to buy? Um, I think certainly from our perspective, um, the, the offers that we've received so far aren't too different to what they would have been pre-lockdown. Um, so whilst there has been the opportunity for cheeky offers, the buyers haven't, haven't taken it. Um, we, you know, we follow social media and conversations that are going on within sort of expat groups. Um, and I think you've got a mixed bag. Um, you've got, you, you have got people that are, you know, are hoping for the prices to drop quite considerably and believe that they will do so. Um, and I think you've got others that think that, you know, they may, they may be able to get a few extra percentage points off. Um, but they don't think they're going to drop sub substantially. Um, I don't think there's any doubt that, you know, as the market starts to open, um, and again, I think it goes back to, you know, what Stephen said, if, 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 if uh, there are a number of withdrawals and, and, and properties in certain, you know, categories, for example, become a lot, you know, a lot less available, then there won't be much change to, to the price. Um, there may be others where we get an influx of certain types of properties that, you know, that's already an, an over, uh, you know, a, a, demands is, is nowhere near supply um, where we may see some price drops but again I think it's one of those where there'll be um, wishful um, anticipation of price drops and um, the reality I think is going to just have to is going to play itself out based on how this progresses over the next over the next few months um, and a bit as you know Zoe has said you know when people um, say to us is it okay if we put in an offer we'll take that we'll, we'll have a conversation with the with the vendor, um, but again, it's about it's about us managing the expectations based on what the actual market conditions are at the time. Um, you know, no different to sellers really. This is going to be an evolving situation um, as lockdown starts and the borders start to reopen, and we go through the rest of this year into next year. For me, yes. <laughs> so I can hear you there. Yeah, look, I think that the market prices are going to drop dramatically. Well, you know, there will be some flexibility on price because it will be circumstantial. You know, the market is more of a depression at the moment than a recession in terms of, like, the banking industry, they had oxygen breathed into them, and they're still, uh, still lending. You know, the additions from um, 2008, so people, like, they may have less capital, for example, to invest. So, you know, the, the big luxury second home market might be out of reach in the Comte de Almeria area. If people uh, are, you know, can't travel here due to flight restrictions, things like this. Well, look, the medium market, that's always going to be strong with people making the change. Uh, you know, they get, this, this lockdown has given people a lot of time to reflect on their criteria. So, you know, two bed, two bath, lock, and leave, lock up and leave with a terrace, you know, might no longer be the option there as people might go, look, I really want the garden in the event that, you know, there's a second wind of this. You know, so, you know, people's criteria are going to change. Like what Tracy said there, you know, it's, it's all about, you know, what's happening with the market at that given time. Thank you. I think it's a really, a really important point, Steve, that you raised there, because people, people's criteria, we've had this conversation, Patricia, and, and, and internally in the, in, the, in the office, people's criteria certainly may change after lockdown because they've realised that they can work from home, they can work remotely so long as they've got a good internet connection and they know how to work Zoom properly. <laughs> so, so, so what we may find is more people may actually come out to live to Spain and, and work from their second home here and then commute back. People are already doing that. Um, so, we, so we, you know, we're aware of clients who work Monday to Thursday in the UK and then fly out to their, to their main residence here. So it, it, it's, it's, I think we're going to have a, a new uh, changed world when we actually come back to some, some form of how things used to be. And it will be interesting to see, Stephen, you know, what, what criteria people will have. Because, again, I was talking to someone yesterday and they said they were get, they're getting married in December and they'd had all this money saved uh, for their wedding but they've they've spent kind of five weeks at home looking at their garden 
and I think they're going to have a smaller party at Christmas time, but they're going to decide to do their garden up. So people, you know, rather than having a two bed, two bath lock up and go, people might actually think, no, I'm going to spend more time in Spain. So I want more outdoor space. I want, I want uh, bigger terraces, gardens. I want, I want more, more space generally. So, so yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be certainly, you know, Spain has been attracting foreigners from all over the world for many years and the Costa del Sol and the Costa Blanca and inland have got so much to offer that this is a, is a key destination for people. Uh, and and um, let's, let's just hope that Spain comes out of this quickly and, and really can push their brand again as they've done before. <laughs> Any of them, same thing. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mind that. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind um, uh, sharing. But uh, what happened is uh, I have a client asked me the same question and she was uh, telling me she, she thought that this could be a great opportunity for her to get a bargain. And it could be or not, depending uh, on the sentiment of the market. Like we have been talking, there is a recessionary aspect in the market and there is the cash flow ability has been tightening more and more from buyer's point of view. But from our side, we're not talking about the single uh, seller or the single person that is uh, selling a property. We see it from, the, from a project. We have 500 units, probably we're the largest uh, development in Costa del Sol and uh, for us we take a, a little spin to that and this is it if the developer has enough financial strength to hold the project through the crisis and continue the development the construction or the remodeling the developer does not have to go and make any discounts or create any bargains for buyers in the market however if the developer gets affected with this current crisis, in order to stay afloat and pay their lenders, they will have to discount their units. And the buyer might see this as a beneficial for them because they will have discounted units. But I see it in, on the other side, the buyer might have to think a little bit uh, further than that because they will have to say, if this developer is struggling and they don't have enough cash, to maintain the property and is going to give a bargain, then the buyer will have a problem because later on who is going to be there and this project can be shut down. So fortunately for us, this is not our case. We have uh, deep enough pockets to continue the development and the construction of our project. But we see that uh, the agents have to also and make that point to their clients specifically when they work with larger development that like ours and I start looking well is the developer has the financial strength to carry this out and sometimes a bargain might be good at the beginning but might not be the best thing for their client so that's what we see in the market. Zoe, same question for you. Yeah, I mean, a couple of my buyers have said they might, you know, offer cheeky offers, but most of them are, you know, still just waiting. It's the same as the sellers, you know, they're just waiting until it, they can come over and, and make offers. You know, you just don't know what's going to happen even in the next month. It, like Alex says, it may be that the international flights don't start till July. Well, you know, by July, the, the, the sellers may be more open to offers. So, you know, you just don't know. Now, Alison, you've, you've put your hand up in the, in the chat. Um, have you got a question to ask? Yeah, I was going to ask <clears throat> the, the estate agents about um, clients who need finance, because I'm working on quite a few clients at the moment who are looking to get their finance in place now with a view to having it ready for when they come out to view in September, October. Um, and some of them, some of them are clients that actually need the finance, and others are clients who are looking to um, hedge uh, the exchange rate. So they want to borrow as much as they can in euros, and um, to have as little as possible exposure to, to to sterling or their home currency. I just wondered whether you're finding you, you do have clients who are looking at finance too. And should we, should we start ask Tracy? We start with that one for, for you. Yeah, um, a few is the answer. Um, I mean, we, we find that the majority of our, our buyers generally pre-pandemic pre, um, were, you know, cash buyers. Um, we have had a couple of inquiries from people that are looking at mortgages um, or different purchasing options. So, for example, we've had a number of, um, a, a slight increase, but certainly an increase in clients that are looking at the rent-to-buy option. Mm -hmm. 
um, where obviously they put down a, a larger deposit um, over a longer period of time um, and pay rent. Um, some of that is actually to try and avoid the big deposits that they need to put down um, for, for a mortgage. Um, but it, it's not a significant increase that we've seen. Now, whether or not that will change moving forward, um, as people are sat at home in their relevant countries looking at their finance, they may not now want to, you know, whereas previously they were using their savings or retirement income or whatever, you know, their, their lump sums to, to buy a property outright. Um, I think we may, there's a possibility we may actually start to see an increasing number of inquiries where they do look into the finance, the finance side of things. So uh, it'll be interesting one to, to watch as, as the buyers start to sort of make their moves as the lockdown start to um, be decreased. Anyone else? Is there any, Stephen? Javier, any, any other comments about that on the, on the finance side? Okay. On the finance side for us, uh, what we do, as you know, we work with so many agents and uh, the way that we're approaching this, uh, because people had asked the developer to provide our own financing and we don't want to do that because our main focus is to uh, really put our resources into developing the project. However, what we do is we have created a list of resources. For example, we have you, if somebody asks me, hey, you know, a great lawyer to work with, we provide that not only to our agents, but we provide that to the buyer directly. And what we have seen is that depending on the price point, our product is on the 100,000 euros range. Most of the people are cash buyers, but there are few that are still looking to get the project and they want to get into it. Uh, what we do is something that uh, in Spain is not very common, but in the US is something that we do every day. Uh, they have mortgage brokers. And also I think in the UK is something that people use regularly. So we are implementing these tools to have our clients within the promotion pre-qualified. So to answer that question, um, if you look at from the point of view of having a pre-qualified client, the way that I address that will be if you're a client looking to be pre-qualified, I will reach out to your agent, first of all, and we can be available for you if you need more resources. But with that, you go through this mortgage broker and what they do normally, they offer a pre-qualification for the buyer. That client that is pre-qualified usually pays uh, 1,000 to 2,000 euros. That is a service that most of the mortgage brokers could even refund to the buyer once they are approved and they purchase the property. So hopefully this answered that question. Stephen, uh, is there any comments on finance? Are your, yeah, are, your buyers, are your buyers, before they come out to Spain, which is which Alison and I have had this conversation before, it's always good if you're, if you're looking at buying a property, Obviously, do your finances first, depending on the areas that you're looking to buy in. You're looking at uh, purchase costs on top of between 10 and 15 percent, depending on the area. So, for example, where, where Tracy's based in the Costa Blanca, transfer tax there starts at 10 percent. You come down to Murcia, it's 8 percent. Down to Andalusia, it's 8 percent as well. And then over to the Canaries, it starts at 6.5 percent. So, so as part of your buying process, uh, we're always talking to clients saying, you know, what's your budget? And have you taken into account the cost on top? And if you are going to, uh, if you are going to uh, uh, inquire about a mortgage, it's always best to talk to a mortgage broker before they even come out to Spain, so they can send people like Alison, who's an independent mortgage broker, uh, all of their financial information. So when they come out to Spain, they're armed with a budget of, you know, a, a, a budget which they're kind of happy and confident with, and know how much they can offer. Is that right, Alison? And you're, is, is that, so basically yeah. what you're saying you know, is you're seeing that now. People are, are getting ready for when lockdown come, you know, is lifted so they can come out to Spain and, and they'll be re all, all ready to go, so to speak. No, that's totally right. It, it puts them, if you can get your finance organised well in advance of coming out um, to view properties, then it, it puts you in a much stronger position for you to go in, view, pro view properties with your agent, um, fall in love with something and put in an offer straight away. Whereas you don't, you won't have as much confidence to do that if you haven't got your finance sorted before, beforehand. Um, so it is something that we, that we specialize in doing. We can do agreements in principle for all clients and do a full study of their finances and actually give them an agreement in principle before they come out. So, so that's what we're mainly working on at the moment for clients who are hopefully gonna come back out very shortly. 
as Stephen, are you finding that too? Look, only 10% of our clientele actually acquire mortgages, most of them are cash buyers. But what we do is, like, like most agents, I'm sure, uh, we, we qualify every single client before we do viewings with them anyway. So we typically with clients, we have a three to six months relationship. We email, telephone, anyway. So what we do is we don't work with any mortgage brokers because it's not the norm down here. Uh, what we do is we work with the banks directly and uh, we talk to the bank managers, we get simulation of what they're offering, we put information links onto our site and they do get pre-approval in advance because they're going to have to open up a bank account anyway. And then when we're doing the handover to the legal, it's a case of they have pre-approval on this and we make sure during the due diligence is perfectly clear and any offer and reservation that's subject to mortgage approval. Okay, yeah, so sli slightly, slightly differently down there, but, but in effect, yeah, pre-approval before pre-approval of a mortgage before people submit offers and and Definitely. something we've always talked about when um if you're if you're if you're a buyer going out when when you're touring with the agents i'd strongly recommend that you uh you know ask them how long the sellers had the property in the market for if they've accepted or rejected any offers if any sales have fallen through and why and and, and ask them why they're why they're selling so just try and learn a bit more about the seller and and then and then have a good look around, look at similar value properties, similar size, and that will give you a good idea of how much you could potentially offer. And of course, rely on the agent as well to, uh, to tell you about the local area. No, any, any other comments on, on the finances? Yeah, most, most, again, most of our clients are cash buyers, although this week I have had three people that I've referred over to Alison. So that's good. Hopefully she'll be, uh, she'll be in touch with them this week. And again, they're just people that I've been talking to for a long time and they just, you know, they're, they're thinking, what can I do to start with, you know, to, to make the steps that I can do from home. So, you know, sorting out their mortgage before they come over um, is perfect. Excellent. Excellent. So I think we've got time for one last question. If anyone has got a question, um, just raise their hand in the chat box uh, on, the, on the bottom of the screen. Uh, but Rosario, over to you. Yes, uh, well, I would like to ask, I would like to start by Tracy. Uh, uh, are you implementing uh, any change uh, for your business after lockdown is lifted? Um, in terms of what we've, I mean, one of the things that the um, lockdown and the crisis has taught us is how as an industry uh, we can adapt quickly to a very uh, a, a dramatically changing marketplace. Um, we've learned a lot about um, where we've got some um, shortcomings in terms of our technology, which is already in process of, of, of being improved whilst we've got the opportunity to do so. Um, so probably the biggest change for us will really be just having a much bigger toolkit um, from a, you know, a, a technology perspective to meet the needs of um, our buyers and vendors moving forward. Um, you know, as with most of these things, I think there's probably as more opportunities um, and you know when we're not running around doing what we would normally be doing day to day um, and that's certainly what we found you know there's there's lots of opportunities for us to connect differently um, or improve the way that we we connect with people um, with a lot more tools um, to, to help them on their property finding or selling journey and um, so certainly our focus at the moment has is to do that um, we've got some processes that we'll be looking to streamline um, that you know we've, we've had to do as part of this and it makes sense to bring them into into the business and I think you know we'll just as a team um, and as an industry in general I think you know we, we've 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 shown how flexible flexible and agile that we can be um, to, to, to changing circumstances so that will continue I think um, we'll be a lot more adaptive to um, you know how our people work um, and how we how we transact with with people so nothing majorly significant i don't think um other than just you know taking the opportunities that presented themselves to do things a little bit differently um to improve what we what we would ordinarily do anyway so uh, if, so yeah so again pretty much the same you know doing lots more videos lots more um video calls to clients just using the technology that's available that you know we perhaps didn't have time for before um, because we were so busy showing properties that we're all just sort of you know just taking it a little bit more slowly and 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 doing that you know using using the phone using the internet um, you know and hopefully going forward we'll we'll be taking properties 
you know, all the new properties that we take on, just as a matter of fact, we'll do videos of just in case, you know, we are, we're ever in this situation again where people can't get out. I think, I think, we, um, well, yeah, we're, we're coming to the end. Um, so thank you, every, every, thank you everyone for joining today. We will be posting this, we'll be, we'll be editing uh, this video and then posting it on our website for anyone to view. You've got the contact details on our Facebook page of all the agents who have kindly joined us today and given up their time. Thank you to all of you um, for, for joining us today and, and participating. But our next seminar is on the 8th of May. So next weekend we're having a break because we've got uh, May, May Day bank holiday. So uh, lots more time to do some, um, some gardening and housework. <laughs> and, uh, and, then, and then we, we, uh, we'll, we'll resume on the 8th of May when we'll be talking about surveys and, and valuations. And we'll have um, different companies joining us then and um, watch out for more information about that on our Facebook page. From, from the Mylor in Spain team, and uh, also from, uh, from Ali Meehan, who helped us uh, organize this from Cost to Women. Thank you very much indeed. Have a great weekend. We look forward to seeing you all soon in person. And we hope that the um, you know, Brits and, and other nationalities come back to Spain and buy as many properties as they possibly can as soon as possible. Have a great weekend. We'll see you all soon.